It is a blessing of another brand new day to you out there. I want to welcome you to your favorite program, Sunday School, a program that has actually been designed by the church to help you from one level of glory to another level of glory. A program designed to help you in your Christian walk, to help you in your Christian journey. See, we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And as we know that, a school is where you actually go to and you learn the precepts, you learn the dictates, you learn how to move from one level of glory into another level of glory. And like I always say, any class of Sunday school you miss is just like a treasure that you thrown away and you want to continue with this program and if you have contributions if you have anything you want us to improve on this program please feel free to share with us because we are aiming to take this program from what it is now into another realm another dynamic realm of glory thank you for joining us today and today promises to be a wonderful impactful time as we unpack the word of god as we unpack what the school has for us today and don't forget i'm your host i'm aki kunle Akinla. and the topic we have today is assurance of salvation but before we go into what we have for today last week we learned something which is to be thankful that is our expression of gratitude most especially when you're talking about a deity and it says something in one of the verses in which we learned about it says uh, that we should make our request known unto god however we need to pray unto god with our prayers and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God. So we don't have to be anxious for anything. The only thing we need to do is we pray, we make our supplications. But the aspect of thanksgiving, which is the password or the code, <laughs> needs to be incorporated in what we do. And we also learned that when we are thanking God, we are not thanking God for what he's doing. We are thanking him for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he will do ahead of time. And we are not also thanking God because of the things in which we want to get, but we want to thank God for who he is. And today we'll be looking at assurance of salvation. Our opening prayer says, Father, thank you for the gift of salvation. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, God. Father, we thank you for this gift of salvation that you've brought unto mankind. Daddy, we say your name be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our topic today says assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation. So many at times we've heard of assurance of salvation. And, and in the world in which we live in today, in the context of things, one of the most difficult aspects that people usually ask this question, and they, at times they don't get answers to is that, okay, we're talking about salvation. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. What assurance do I have of that salvation? Some other people will say a form of security, that my salvation is genuine, that my salvation is sealed. And some have also propagated or, or come up with ideologies around when you're saved, uh, you are saved forever. You know, all of these things are, are things that have been uh, in the body of Christ that people are trying to understand. But today we'll look through the lens of the spirit and talk about assurance of salvation what is that thing that gives you that assurance uh, assurance that we're talking about it, it takes it a step further above the security of your salvation whether your salvation is sealed or not what is that thing on the inside of you that gives you that conviction uh, that you are truly saved that you are genuinely saved not that when somebody comes up tomorrow and comes up with another doctrine you are moved or you are tossed here and there like that wind that does not have a clear direction or a sense of direction of where you're going to we are looking at assurance of salvation uh, memory verse for today is taken from Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 Romans 10 9 the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe uh, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved and I'm going to read it again one more time Romans chapter 10 and we'll be looking at verse 9. It says, And if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if we try to look at what the Bible is actually saying there, 
The first thing is that we need to confess. And what are you actually confessing? What are you confessing? If you confess with your mouth, that the, your mouth, the Lord Jesus. So you are not, we are not talking about the confession of your sin. You are confessing with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what you have confessed about the Lord Jesus Christ, that you are accepting him. And you now believe in what you have said. You have believed in your heart. So your, your mind and what you say, they have to be in synergy. They have to be together. Not that one is actually wavering. One is actually doing one. No, 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 no. Everything has to be in sync. Then the Bible says, you will be saved. And the first thing is, you're confessing the Lord Jesus Christ and you're believing that God had raised him up as propitations for our sins. God has accepted his ultimate sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he gave everything up so that God can gain everything to himself. And that God, not that a man was caught, a man was crucified, a man was buried, and also you believe that that same man was raised up in glory, then you'll be saved. Our lesson introduction today says, Many followers of Jesus Christ look for assurance of salvation in the wrong places. We tend to seek assurance of salvation in the things God is doing in our lives. So the fact that God, or you are seeing miracles in your ministries, you are laying hands on the sick and they are recovering, you are casting out devils, that is not an assurance of salvation. Have you forgotten what the Bible says? It says many will come on the last day. And they'll say, Lord, I have done this in your name. I have done exploits in your name. I have won nations in your name. I have done so many things in your name. And Jesus Christ saying, Lord, will say, I know you not. Workers of iniquity. So the fact that you're seeing miracles, the fact that you're seeing signs, is not an assurance of your salvation. He says, so many people, they've actually confused the things God is doing in their lives. They are breaking barriers. They are conquering frontiers. It's not an assurance of salvation. He says, and also, God is doing in our lives and also our spiritual growth. It's not an assurance of salvation. He says, in the good works and obedience to God's words, that is evident in our Christian work. Let me read that again. He said, we tend to seek assurance of salvation in the things God is doing in our lives, in our spiritual growth, in the good works and obedience to God's word. That is evident in our Christian work. So, if you want to actually look for assurance of salvation, you are not supposed to look for the assurance of your salvation in all these things that we've spoken about because I read the word of God 10 times in a day. Because I can, I can, I can fast for 100 days, direct fasting. I can go 40 days just on water. Hey, brothers and sisters, we don't need to confuse the scriptures. The scriptures is clear on everything. It says, while these things can be evidence of salvation, they are not what we should base the assurance of our salvation on. So we can say that we can see that, okay, Father, I thank you. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is there. I'm speaking in other tongues. Indications. But it is still not the assurance of salvation. We should not base the assurance of our salvation on all those things that we are saying. Thus, this lesson sentence on the confidence we have that we are now saved. So assurance of salvation talks about the inner conviction, the confidence in which you have that you are saved and you are genuinely saved. The confidence you have on the inside of you, no matter what, what the situation is saying, what anything is saying, I am saved and I am saved, and you can beat your chest to it. Not that you base your salvation on the, the hours you spend reading the word of God. The time you spend praying in the Holy Ghost. The demons you are casting. No, brothers and sisters. God will give us understanding. Let's go on to our first break. We will be right back with more. God bless you. Welcome 
from that break, and if you're just joining us, you're tuning into Sunday School on our topic today, Assurance of Salvation. And to continue our thoughts for today, let's go into our Bible reading for today. Our Bible reading will be taken from 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. The Bible says, And this is the record that God had given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. He that had the Son at life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So powerful a scripture. It says, and this is the record. This is the record. This is the testimony that we have. This is the testimony that we have, that God had given unto us eternal life. Eternal life talks about a life without a beginning and a life without ending. But that eternal life we are talking about is not the life that witness here. That eternal life is a life after this mortal body has been transformed into immortality. Then you see the essence of that eternal life. When a man has given his life to Jesus Christ, you know that you have life eternal. Whether death, you suffer death here or you go through death here or not, but you know that there is eternal life and it says that this life we are talking about is in his soul so every man that wants this eternal life this life that does not have an ending this life that has transcended beyond the realms of humanity that person can only access that testimony of that life that life that life is only in jesus christ because the bible says something in matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 it says that they will bring forth a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel because he will save his people from their sins. He will save them from their destruction. Or that rendition actually saying that. So we know that this issue of salvation, salvation talks about deliverance. Salvation talks about saving a people from the consequences or from going into that doom. Salvation talks about you redeeming people back from that destruction in which they are going and bringing them into a state whereby they are saved. And that salvation we are talking about that will save men from destruction is can only be found in Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible is talking about that testament that God has given unto us eternal life. And this eternal life that God has given unto us, the only way in which we can access it, the only way in which we can be beneficiaries of this eternal life is only when we access it through the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do you access it through the Lord Jesus Christ? He says that, either at the son at life so how do i have this life we're talking about or how do i have the person of the lord jesus christ and either had not the son of god had not this life so we see is either you have this life which is in jesus christ or you don't have this life the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So this everlasting life is it in Christ Jesus. And the only way in which you can access this eternal life or this life we are talking about is only in Jesus Christ. And how do I do that? If I can confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, then that is the only way in which you can access this life eternal we are talking about. It's for you to believe in Jesus. Jesus Christ. Verse 13 says something so profound. It says, These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. So I am believing the Lord Jesus Christ, that God has also given him a name that is above every other name. So it is until when you believe. Do you know what gives people condemnation? Is that they did not accept the lord jesus christ god will never condemn any man but there's a place that god has put it that i have given you my son to redeem you from your sins if you believe on him there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in christ but if you don't accept it it is just a matter of choice then condemnation sets in so i pray that god will give us understanding in the name of jesus christ the record the testament that we have that God has given us life and that the life God is talking about is hid in his son is that he will believe on the son and God will help us in Jesus mighty name amen now let's go into our outlines we have two lesson outlines the first one talks about what is salvation and the second one talks about assurance of salvation let's look at what salvation is 
Salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering. To save is to deliver or you protect. Sometimes the Bible uses the word saved or salvation to refer to temporal physical deliverance such as Paul's deliverance from prison. And we see that according to Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. So we're looking at salvation is to deliver somebody from danger or from suffering. Look at what happened in the Old Testament when God used the Moses to actually bring the Israelites out. That was deliverance. That was salvation for them, which is typical to what God actually wants to do. Because the tax master, Pharaoh, that is the devil in the world in which we live in today. Moses, a man sent by God to deliver those people from oppression, from the doom of destruction. And we see that in Jesus Christ today. To save us from that sin, the consequences of sin, the consequences of going against the law or, or the ordinances, which is Jesus Christ. So we see salvation is the deliverance of humankind from destruction. Another one says the word salvation concerns an eternal spiritual deliverance. Jesus equated being saved with entering into the kingdom of God. And that can be seen in Matthew chapter 19. Let's go to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19 verse 24 to 25. The Bible says, and again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Jesus Christ speak in parable unto them. And they say, okay, if it is like this, then who can now be saved? So the word salvation concerns eternal or spiritual deliverance. And this issue of salvation that we are so talking about, brothers and sisters, it is not something that we can understand by the physical. Because the Bible in 1 Peter chapter 2 says something so profound about salvation. And I'm just going to read it. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9. I will read it up to verse 12. It says, receiving the end of your faith, the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, not unto themselves. So we see that every prophet at one time or the other they were searching for what the salvation is come talking about or whom will God use to bring this salvation unto humanity and it says that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister these things which now are reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent from heaven which things the angels desire to look unto so this issue of salvation even the angels are interested in salvation this salvation who is going to deliver mankind because these are mysteries eat right from the foundations of the world. Now let's continue. See, salvation means to be saved from wrath. That is, to be exempted from God's judgment of sin. And we know that God will definitely judge sin. That's one thing God will do. The Bible in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Romans 5, 9. The Bible says, much more dead, be now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. So there is a wrath that the Bible is saying to us, salvation means to be saved from the wrath. And how are we being saved from this wrath? The only way is because we are justified. And justification talks as if you have never sinned before. We are justified by his blood. We shall now be saved from the wrath through, through the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, which death, eternal separation from God, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Salvation therefore implies removal of one sin. So salvation is saving you from the consequences of sin, which is death. But how do you get that deliverance? Is when that thing, that thing called sin, is actually removed, then justification sets in, as if you've never sinned before. The second one says, only God can remove sin and deliver us from its penalty. That's according to Second Timothy chapter one. And verse 9. The Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. 
The Bible says, who hath saved us and called us with his only calling, not according to our works. So everything is not synonymous or directly proportional to your works, but according to his own purpose and grace. So if it is by your own works, we don't qualify, but it is based on the merit of God. Because when God is dealing with humanity, he's not dealing with us based on our own capacity. He deals with us based on his own capacity, which we can assess by the grace of God, given by the Lord Jesus Christ, from the eternal workings of humanity. So it is not in proportion to what you can do, but it is proportion to what what he can do by his grace in us. He says, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So we can see the dealings of God to humanity. He says, he does this through his son Jesus Christ. That's according to John chapter 3, verse 3 to 19. Specifically, the first one, it was Jesus' shedding of his blood, his death on the cross, and subsequently, resurrection that achieved our salvation so salvation became a whole package when Jesus Christ suffered when he was crucified when he was buried and when he was raised up into glory full package for salvation scripture is clear that salvation is gracious undeserved gift of God according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 let's quickly see what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 the Bible says even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are ye saved. So we are saved by grace. It is not of works. Let any man boast. It is by grace that we are saved. Scripture is clear on salvation is gracious. So salvation, we are saved by grace. And it is only acceptable through faith in Jesus Christ. So when we are talking about salvation, your faith also has a, a, a work to do. Because when you are talking about salvation, people don't understand that. How can I confess Jesus Christ and I believe my sins have been taken away? Logically, it makes no sense. But it begins to make sense when you begin to look at it with the eyes of the Spirit. Having faith in God because when you understand what faith is, faith is not what you see. But faith is what you don't see and you believe in what you don't see. Because the moment I can see something that is tangible and I now begin to believe it, it is no more faith. But faith talks about the invisible realm of God in the affairs of men and me actually believing in what I don't see and I'm professing what I don't see. How can you say that? That is faith. Now, salvation is the deliverance by the grace of God from eternal punishment from sin, which is granted to those who believe and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, have repented from their sins. Thank you so much. And let's continue on to our next break. We'll come back with the second outline. God bless you. from that break and if you're just joining us you're tuning into sunday school on our topic today assurance of salvation and to go into our second outline which now deals with assurance of salvation everything we've been doing before is salvation now let's go into assurance of salvation when a sinner hears the gospel of salvation repent and forsake his sin he goes on to confess his sins to jesus christ and ask for salvation he will be saved let's go to what the bible says in romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10. The Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear if there is no preacher? Verse 15 says, And how shall they preach except ye be sent? 
as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings unto good people. So we can see the progression of what the Bible is actually saying here. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whether young, old, fat, slim. The, the, the key is you calling on the name of the Lord, then you will see salvation. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. We should not live our Christian lives wondering and worrying each day whether we are truly saved or not. The moment you call upon the name of the Lord, you are saved. So there is no room for you trying to doubt. It's just like when you want to plant a maize. You plant a maize into the soil. But do you know that every farmer, after they've planted it, they leave it. They know they've done something. They know it will germinate. And they go their way. Do you know what unbelief does that affects this assurance of your salvation? Is that you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you're like that farmer. You've planted the seed. You've confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're sleeping. Am I saved or not? It's like you going back there and you take a spade or whatever. You open the soil. As this seed started germinating, that seed will never germinate because you will kill it. But you leave it there. Three days after, you will see it coming forth. And that is what it is. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, believe in your mind that it is settled, that you are now a child of God. And I say to you, you are a child of God. Then you now start seeing all those evidence of salvation. That is when the seeds start growing. It is until after it is settled. But the moment you want to check, am I, am I not? You are killing that seed. And God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So the key is that you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Then you'll be saved. Now, let's take it a step further. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him, you'll be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. It is unto your heart that you believe unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Then you, you're confessing Jesus Christ then you confess that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and, and your Savior. You are saved from that very moment. Believers you trust that they are saved based on the promises God declared, not because of their subjective experiences or religious activities. And that's also according to Ephesians chapter 2 that we read before. Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 8 to 9. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The assurance of salvation therefore comes by faith in God's word. That's according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. The Bible in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, therefore being justified by faith. It is by faith that you are justified as if you've never seen before. Then we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the Holy Spirit bears inner witness with our spirit. So the assurance of your salvation is that you have the spirit of God on the inside of you and the spirit is bearing witness with you that you are what that you are the child of God he says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God assurance of salvation that is the assurance of your salvation that you have the spirit that is bearing witness with you you are not wavering you are sure that you've given your life to Jesus Christ by the spirit of God that is on the inside of you your salvation is sure and is genuine and I pray God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Our summary to this is, once you confess your sin unto God, repent from them, forsake your sins, surrender your life to Jesus Christ, ask him to forgive your sins, and declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior with faith in your heart, you are saved. Just that. Somebody says, is that, sim is that simple? It's not complicated. That simple. Do not doubt your salvation. Build your assurance in Christ through intimacy with the word of God. So another thing that helps to build your faith by the word of God. Another thing that helps to build your faith, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you do all of these things, it helps you to build your faith. And the Spirit bears witness with you that you are saved. The moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, you've accepted him. The Spirit of God is inside of you. You may now go through every other thing, learning every other thing about the Word of God, talking about sanctification and all those things at a later time. But you are saved that moment. And the Spirit is bearing witness that you are the child of God. God will help us in Jesus' name. And for as many people that want to give their life to Jesus Christ, say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord. I confess you as my Savior. 
I say, save me today. I believe that you've been raised up from the dead. And I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I forsake my sins. I forsake the past deeds. I forsake the enemy. I forsake the workings of the enemy. Come into my life. Tabernacle in me. Raise me up on the last day. And I believe it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. That simple. And God will give you the grace and the enablement to continue to walk with him. It is well with you. The lives will continue to fall onto you in pleasant places. And the closing prayer says, Father, help me not to lose my salvation in Jesus. I pray for you today, you will not lose your salvation in the name of Jesus. God may continue to take you from one level of glory into another level of glory. It is well with you. God bless you.